have your Bibles with you this evening, would you open them to the 124th Psalm? Psalm 124. And if you're able, stand with me as we read from God's Word. We'll read the psalm, beginning at verse 1. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, now may Israel say, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side when men rose up against us, then they had swallowed us up quick when their wrath was kindled against us. Then the waters had overwhelmed us. The stream had gone over our soul. Then the proud waters had gone over our soul. Blessed be the Lord who hath not given us as a prey to their teeth. Our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken and we are escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. Bow your heads, please. Thank you, Lord, for the word of God and what it says to us this evening. Speak to us from it, and for that we will thank you. Amen. You may be seated. Old, often older Christians, especially women that have lost their husbands or women who are alone, will often say something like this to me. Pastor, I just don't know what I'd do without the Lord. Or this line, precious lady named Sudi Mullen in one of my previous churches would always say to me, I don't know how people make it without him. I mean, she would say that every time I would visit her in that nursing home she was in. Literally, I knew what she was going to say. I don't know how people make it without him. And I agree completely with the sentiment of the, those words. I don't know what I'd do without the Lord or how I'd make it. And I'd hate to think of what life would be without the Lord. And I'm not that old yet, and I'm not alone. I wish you would hear stuff like that more, though, from young people. And men sometimes, though, for it's not just older women that need the Lord, is it? We all need him, old and young alike. As I said, I don't know what I'd do without the Lord, and I'm not afraid to admit that. I depend upon my Lord every day to sustain me, and to keep me going. And dads, fellas, uh, your kids need to hear you say that. That you need the Lord's help. That, they won't consider you weak if they hear that from you. But it may encourage them to put their trust in the Lord. And that's one of the reasons that God wants us to testify when he helps us, to let people know that God helps us and we don't know what we do without his help. 
Now, does God really deserve your praise, or are you one of those that thinks you can get along in your own strength? How you answer that will probably tell me all I need to know about why you're either saved and trusting in the Lord or why you're not. Many people turn to the Lord when they're in some kind of desperate situation. They get what they call in the army foxhole religion. If you won't pray when the bombs are dropping around you, you probably never will. But it shouldn't take a war to get you to turn to the Lord. Some people do it when they lose their jobs or when their marriage is ready to fall apart or when they get sick or when death comes along to a dear loved one or friend or there are a hundred and one other things I could put in there, a thousand and one other things we could list. And, and that's fine. If some bad thing causes a person to turn to God and get saved, well, that was a godsend. There's not even anything wrong with praying that something will happen in our loved ones' lives to bring them to their knees and to their senses. You mean I ought to pray for bad things to happen to people preacher? No, that's not what I said. You need to pray that God will do whatever it takes to get them on their knees and so they can see their need for him. The only bad thing about that is if God does answer your prayer, your loved one may then reveal to you just how hard-hearted they are or how little hope there is for them when they can pass through things and refuse to turn to the Lord. But praise God, sometimes people do turn to the Lord out of trouble, and they lean on him and trust him, and their life or their marriage or whatever mess they have is spared or put back together. And we rejoice whenever we see that happen, don't we? Wish we'd see it happen a little more. We should be glad for every mess that God is able to fix, for every tragedy that God is able to head off. But many times after people's lives are put back together and are running smoothly again, and the crisis is over, people begin to lose sight of where they could be now. And they begin to go back to acting self-sufficient again, living in their own strength. And oftentimes, when the bombs quit dropping around the foxhole, so often... People forget about God then when there's no more problems. You've seen it before, I'm sure, with people. Something that will keep us humble and could very well keep us from backsliding would be to remind ourselves of the phrase that the, psalm, the psalmist uses here in verses 1 and 2. If it had not been for the Lord. If it had not been for the Lord, what might you have to look back on to fill in the blanks to conclude that sentence? 
Now, I'm sure you've probably heard me say every one of these things I'm going to say next somewhere before in my preaching, but I hope you'll consider each and every one of them. First of all, if it had not been for the Lord, maybe you would be dead today, long before your time. Do you remember a car wreck that you just barely avoided? A deer that jumped over the hood instead of going through the windshield? A fall that you took and you landed on soft ground instead of a rock? Or some other circumstances where those words might apply to you? You surely don't think you were lucky. I don't think anybody here tonight probably does. Or remember, maybe when the doctor said, I don't know if we have anybody here like that this evening, but remember if the doctor said, there's nothing more I can do. But here you sit. Or maybe there's somebody that remembers the night that you got out the pills or went to the drawer and got a knife. Or maybe you even had a gun to your head and something stopped you. I don't know if there's anybody here that may have had that memory just pop into their mind, but if you do, I want you to remember that night. For it had not, if it had not been for the Lord stopping you, well, maybe you'd be dead right now. Secondly, if, you had, if it had not been for the Lord, maybe you would be in jail right now. Uh, trust me, my son Jason will tell you jail is not a nice place to be. Guarding prisoners every day and seeing what it's like in there. I don't know how many of us here tonight may have ever did anything worthy of being locked up for, but I suspect maybe there might be somebody. But even if you never actually did anything deserving of jail time because of the friends you were running with, if you're hearing this on YouTube because of the friends you're running with right now or the way you're starting to lean, you might very well be there by now. You're going to be there if you don't change your course that you're following. For sin will always take you farther always than you intended to go. Maybe even here there's somebody that might be in jail right now if it hadn't been for the Lord and your mother's prayers. Don't forget that. Thirdly, if it had not been for the Lord, maybe your marriage would be shot. By now, I might be talking to somebody right now that had you both not got saved, and it takes two to make a successful marriage, incidentally. You'd have been in divorce court by now. Maybe you've already been there because you or your spouse <coughs> wouldn't follow the Lord. Or had it not been for the Lord, maybe you'd be in a marriage right now that you would be regretting. Lots of people find themselves there because they don't or didn't listen to the Lord in the first place. Fourthly, if, you had, if it had not been for the Lord, maybe you'd be broke right now. 
down and out, destitute, on a skid row somewhere, right now. Oh, you say, oh, oh not me, preacher. I, I would never have let it go that far. Would you suppose anybody there would have ever let it go that far? Well, not only will sin take you farther than you ever planned to go, but it will keep you there longer than you ever planned to stay. And it will cost you more than you ever meant to pay. Now, it's popular for celebrities to be in rehab these days. Seems like you may even get a, a job if somebody knows you've been in rehab. They even had a TV show about it. I don't know if it's still on or not. I never watched it, but I remember it. But it's no fun being addicted to something. Any of you that have ever been addicted to something, you know it's no fun. How many people do you think would walk back into another casino or another bar room if they knew when they walked in they were going to lose their home or their car or their marriage or their life savings as a result of it? But a gambling habit... Drugs, booze, sexual perversion, many other sins will take your last nickel and drag you down into the gutter if you give it a chance. It will also take your self-respect. Some of those guys you see if you've ever been to Baltimore, D.C., sleeping on a sewer grate to catch the heat from the sewer, once wore three-piece suits and drove Mercedes. Now, what you're seeing out in California right now, you're seeing all kinds of people like that because California just basically opened the door, and everybody like that from the country seems to be going there. But if it had not been for the Lord, might that possibly have been a description of you? Don't say, oh, no, 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 no. You never know if it had not been for the Lord. Fifthly, if it had not been for the Lord, maybe you'd be in a mental institute of some sort tonight. Many people are there because they couldn't cope with what took place in their life. And that could have been hundreds of things. Some are there because they can't cope with life in general. The Lord can help us to cope, can't he? With whatever it is we have to cope with. A number of years ago, Linda and I sat next to somebody at a funeral dinner that we knew. And Linda asked this guy where his sister was. And these were his words, and I'll, I'll never forget them. He said, she doesn't go out much because she can't cope with life. You know, I know there are lots of people like that. Those were his exact words about his sister. Most of the time, people won't admit it. But he said, she doesn't go out much because she can't cope with life. God helps us to cope, doesn't he? Maybe your feelings or your emotions would have got the best of you by now if it had not been for the Lord. Or maybe even worse than that, you'd be one of those people living under a bridge in a cardboard box or something like that, while people refer to you would refer to you as some kind of nut. 
Linda and I knew somebody who went to school with us that was living under a bridge in California in just that, in a cardboard box. How'd she get there? She became anorexic in high school because she couldn't cope with being fat. And that led her down that terrible road. I don't know about you, but I'd rather be fat. I say somebody we knew because she's dead now. Folks, you don't end up in an institution or living under a bridge as a result of walking with the Lord. He helps. He gives us the power to cope with whatever it is we need to cope with. Maybe you'd be on a proud ego trip right now, or maybe you would have been an habitual liar or a complainer. Or maybe you'd be alone right now without any friends. Have you noticed how selfish, sinful people often grow old without any friends? A Christian has the family of God. If you don't have anybody else, you've got this bunch here tonight who love you, care about you. And of course, we couldn't talk about this subject without saying if it had not been for the Lord, every single person here tonight could and would be lost right now. And you don't have to be a drunk or a heroin addict or something like that to be lost this evening. If you don't know the Lord... You are lost. Even if you've lived in a nice house for the last 30 years with your spouse of 30 years and you never stop at the bar room on your way home from work and you go to church every Sunday, you still can be lost. If you're saved from your sins right now, you wouldn't be that way, had it not been for the Lord loving you and dying for you, first of all, and then convicting you of your sins and drawing you to follow him and calling you to be one of his. Otherwise, you'd still be lost. That wouldn't happen to me. I'd still be lost. Or maybe you thought of something else to put in there to finish the sentence. If it had not been for the Lord, I might have been blank. Or I would be in, or I would be blank. Or I might have turned out such and such had it not been for the Lord. You, you fill in the blank. And every American these days needs reminded that had it not been for the Lord, America would not be blessed the way it has been. But we have very bad memories. People have very bad memories. We can forget where God has brought us from <coughs> or where we could have ended up had he not saved us from our sins. So don't forget wherever it was that God brought you from. It'll help you to praise his name. 
And the next time you see someone that sin has an obvious hold on their life, don't you act holier than thou and look down your nose at them. Remind yourself that had it not been for the grace of God, that could just as easily have been you. Don't you dare say, oh, no, not me. I would have never lowered myself like that. You don't know what you would do if God wasn't in your life, if God wasn't controlling your life. Uh, but we don't have to be saved very long until it becomes easy to forget where God has brought us from or what God has brought us out of. If you know your Old Testament and know the history of Israel, you know that Israel's main problem was always that they were forgetting where God had brought them from. They were always forgetting what God had done for them. That was their problem all the time. They do it over and over and over again. They were slaves in Egypt for 400 years. They cried to God for 400 years to set them free. And God answered their prayer. But when they left Egypt, they got backed up against the Red Sea. And God performed one of the greatest miracles ever by parting the waters so that that huge conglomerate of people and animals could cross the Red Sea on dry ground. In chapter 15 of Exodus, when they got over on the other side and Pharaoh's soldiers had been drowned, they praised God for their deliverance. But when they got to Mara and its bitter waters, it says the people murmured against Moses. Very common phrase, wasn't it? They murmured against Moses, saying, what shall we drink? When you get to Exodus 16, 2 through 3, it says, the whole congregation of Israel murmured against Moses and Aaron. And the children of Israel said unto them, would to God that we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt. Think of that. And when you get to verse 7, their murmurings actually turn away from Moses and Aaron and they are directed against the Lord. You know... They should have appointed someone to get up every morning and to go around reminding everybody that if it had not been for the Lord, you know, we'd still be slaves back in Egypt, making brick, feeling Pharaoh's whip on our back, half starving even if they had to pay somebody to do that, it would have been worth every penny that they paid him if he somehow would have managed to keep them reminded of where they came from. But they just kept forgetting. Well, perhaps that's what God has appointed me to do this evening. To remind us all where we might be today if it had not been for the Lord. 
and to warn us all where we will end up if we forget that, where we could have been, and start to say and look down our nose at somebody that is in a mess and say, oh, man, look at that pathetic guy. No, if it's not, wouldn't have been for God's amazing grace. The most pathetic person you know could be on you. And to warn us all where we will end up if we refuse to listen to the Lord and to follow him. If you follow the Lord, I hope that everybody here this evening knows this. Your life will be better than if you do it your own way. And eternity definitely will be better. I don't know about you, but every time I read those words in that psalm, it causes me to shudder where I might be tonight if it were not for the Lord. If it were not for the Lord, I might be this, I might be that, I might be any number of those things that I talked about, and so might you. Thank God for the Lord. And thank God for the difference that he can make in our lives. He can help us to cope. He can help us to say no to sin. He can help us to do the right thing so that none of those things ever had to be said about us. And thank God if God spared you from any of those things I talked about tonight. But you could have been there, whether you realize it or not. One of those things could have been a description of you. Had God not, God not got a hold on you, changed your life, set your feet on solid ground, how many people do you know that are in some kind of a mess tonight? Addicted to something, in jail, their marriage is shot, maybe in a mental institute, on and on the list goes, simply because they did it their way, and that was the result, instead of God's way. Oh, may God help us to never lose sight of that fact of where we could have been, where we maybe would have been had it not been for the Lord. Let's stand. And if any of that whatsoever rang a bell in your past tonight, thank the Lord. Thank him right now as we pray that he changed the direction you were going, that you got away from that, that you didn't end up going that way, and especially that you're not there now, that you're here in this nice, warm, comfortable church serving the Lord with your right senses, in your right mind, trying to live for God. And that's better than all those things I described tonight. Let's join together in a closing word of prayer. Bill, would you please dismiss us with prayer?